Hey guys, welcome to a video I'm about to do on what normals are. And this is going to be kind of aimed at beginners uh, and it's going to pertain more to game artists. And so how to get, uh, this is really going to end up on talking about normal maps. And so we're kind of ramping up into creating normal maps and how to prevent some of the artifacts we get out of normal maps when we're transferring high poly information over to a lower res model and some of the things to look out for and uh, some of the solutions but we're going to start with you know if i say normal map you don't you don't even necessarily know what that is so we're going to break it down from the very kind of beginning talking about polygons and you know what's a kind of basic 3d application theory and uh if we just create seemingly a single polygon here convert to edible poly what you'll begin to understand first things first polygons if we go to properties here uncheck edges only quads don't exist um, for all intensive purposes Max is a real-time engine, just like you would say a game engine, and it displays geometry at its fastest as triangles. That's the simplest form of a polygon, I guess you could say. And so if I go ahead and officially connect these two and make that edge visible, I strip it down to just the triangle. I'm going to do another thing here, kind of look under the hood again. And I'm going to put an edit normals modifier on this. And so really what this is, is every vertice on this piece of geometry has what we call a normal. And uh, you could think of a normal as a vector or a direction in space. And so each one of these vertices are pointing, you could say, in a particular direction. And if we flip over to the side, you see that this is completely rendered black. And uh, really, if we go back under our properties, this is a checkbox. If we uh, check backface culling, you'll see that it's see-through. Because really, as these vectors point forward, it's dictating the front of this polygon. And so we're saying, we're telling the real-time engine to render this side of the polygon and so polygons really only have one side so there's the one side to this triangle now the other side I guess in theory uh, if we I mean you can flip these normals but normals are really about rendering and displaying shading and lighting so as I turn and I break these you'll see that as these point in different directions, it's being lit uh, extremely unevenly. So this single polygon, even though it's you know facing one way, is being lit like it's pointing in three different directions. Okay, so now that you kind of understand what that is you would say okay well why you know why do why do we want to necessarily bend normals like that okay well take this sphere for example <laughs> ignore that you saw that geometry but if we take a look at this I mean at a distance it's seemingly smooth so, I mean it's it looks like a smooth sphere but as we get closer we can see that the sphere is actually made up of you know, and max set to 200 segments, but that is all of the geometry that makes this sphere appear smooth. Turn my wireframe back off, and you'll see as I step down, turn my geometry down on this sphere, you can see how it begins to look not so smooth, right? all these hard edges across this and that's kind of a terminology for you hard edges 
Uh, that's something that kind of gets thrown around in this industry a lot. And we'll, we are referring to specifically these hard edges. So it kind of goes hand in hand when we're talking about normals, hard edges and soft edges or smooth edges. In, in Max, I would still say they're still called hard edges, but Max has an additional feature inside of it called smoothing groups that's created a lot of uh, angry Maya users <laughs> over the years trying to translate Max's smoothing groups into a system that is not using smoothing groups and we'll get we'll get to that but for now just normals normals and hard edges so I mean the industry's always kind of been about getting more on the screen so as you know that could be more geometry more <laughs> you know better lighting better everything it's it's more 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 and but the thing is, is we're always kind of fighting PCs uh, technology at the time you know how much power we have in our PCs and so we can't necessarily just turn everything up to 200 you know you know crazy dense geometry like this we have to kind of strike a balance and that's kind of where those normals come into play is because we can display a seemingly smooth sphere you know at least down to the point where it's not looking faceted on that outer silhouette something like that we can display something that looks you know round perfectly round but we want it to appear smooth and that was as simple as in max checking this little checkbox on the sphere primitive and we're able to just to display a cleaner looking sphere a more proper looking sphere with less geometry and so these average normals these normals or smoothed normals I'm kind of interchanging the terminology there are really benefiting us the artist and the uh, the users the people working with the meshes and the and lighting everything and the people have to wait for the renders uh, we're benefiting everyone really because it's a lighter mesh and it's it just less load times less uh, render times less file sizes you know less on the file size just kind of less everything because we're able to kind of apply this smooth to our normals so let's take a look at what some of these smoothed or you could say averaged uh, normals look like against some hard edges for example so this is just a couple of polygons you know I already have my edit normals modifier on the top here and if I bend these you can see it's reacting to light right now I said every vertice has a normal we can actually split normals those hard edges we can put a hard edge right here because right now even though this thing has a 90 degree angle it's looking really smooth right or we don't have any hard edges on this and so that can be beneficial in some cases to making things look smooth but in this particular case we're wanting a hard edge and so okay we'll go ahead and split select both of those and in that edit normals modifier we could break those and we just broke those normals and now we have that hard edge like we're talking about let's make it a little bit darker in here so there's that hard edge and so you can see we can kind of go back and forth if we unify or smooth or average these normals it gives us a smooth render result across this hard edge across that geometry we get that smooth result and if we break it we get our hard edge and we get that very almost infinitely sharp edge and this can be uh, helpful and then not helpful in some cases I mean for the most part that looks extremely CG that infinitely sharp edge looks extremely CG we try to avoid 
infinitely <laughs> sharp edges as it doesn't look realistic. Most surfaces, most corners uh, on, I mean, just about anything. You can even look on the, say, the front of your computer, run the hand along the edge of your monitor. <laughs> or the mic but there's this little filleted edge that's kinda on everything and that's what tends to make things look a little more realistic I mean even if it's really small pull this down That looks a lot nicer than that hard edge. Okay, so well, when we strive for those nice, soft, highlighted corners, which is why we want average normals, but this kind of creates problems as well because when we look at this 90 degree angle, we get the shadowing down here at the bottom too. And we're going to talk more about that and how to kind of control some of that shadowing. So as we add more geometry we're getting more normals actually split that single edge, that 90 degree edge, I split it with a chamfer. And so I have two normals, one on each side, and it's creating a really just a sharper highlight for me. I mean, it's still pretty soft at the moment, but we're getting a much nicer highlight across that edge, right? And all we did was kind of add one more quad through that. So you could kind of assume that the more geometry, yet, more geometry we add, the cleaner those results get. And this one has one on either side. There's a polygon on either side. It's still 90 degrees. But what you're noticing about this one against these is that because I've added these extra loops these normals are flat and averaged along with the face and so we get this much kind of flatter normal across this plane down here right you see how it lights up nice and even Whereas this one over here, with the fewer geometry and the more averaged and bent looking normals, see those are kind of out at 45s. So we had this kind of soft rounding effect happening to this uh, plane right here. And so that's kind of one of those ways to, to get these like flat surfaces that we want because we want these, we don't want things to look too soft. We want our rounded edges, our rounded corners to make them look nice and realistic, but we don't want the whole object to look too soft. And so kind of learning how to control some of that, adding extra loops, changing the averaging, more geometry, so that these down here are nice and flat through the whole, this whole face is nice and flat. Ooh. Do the chamfer this experiment with. Oops. And so, really, I'm just controlling these hard and soft edges through smoothing groups. Apply to one. There's another way you could do it. Now something to note about splitting these 
splitting these normals is that I said every vertice has its own. Oh, that's interesting. Max says it only has six right now, but one, two, three, four. It should, I mean, technically it has eight. Max is displaying it this way, this hard edge, but typically other game engines count that hard edge as another vertice. Just like we have two normal vectors, there would be two vertices, and so that's how they split. And then when you unify them or you average them, it actually welds those vertices. When you import meshes like this into, say, Unreal, for example, Unreal doesn't support smoothing groups, and so what it does is it bakes your your hard edges in by effectively splitting it. So if you have smoothing groups or hard edges and you export those to Unreal, what Unreal will, un, what Unreal will do is pull those apart. So everything will be smoothed, but it'll pull those apart wherever you want your hard edges. And so that's just you know, an interesting thing that you got to realize about working with hard edges and kind of normals in this uh, industry. So let's take a look at smoothing groups. So smoothing groups are really just groups of normals. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's just really an extra layer, you could say, an extra layer of information. Uh, that Max offers up for dealing with normals. I think these tools are pretty dated. They need some better uh, better systems uh, built into Max for managing smoothing groups. But there's a few scripts out there that you can pick up too that help you kind of smooth things together. So I can grab across this smooth. But no smoothing groups. Now if we go ahead and put our normals on this, our edit normals modifier, you can see look at all that. Every single one of these are split. And this doesn't really look like a fantastic cylinder. <laughs> Uh, with all that faceting that we have going on. So you can say, well, why don't we just, you know, average all of them, right? So I select all my normals, unify or average. And now my, my cylinder looks, I don't know, good? I wouldn't say so. <laughs> Cylinders don't tend to look so heavy shaded like this. And so we're almost looking for a balance, you know, I mean, and that's, that's kind of the advantages of these normals and of smoothing groups is that we can kind of take advantage of both of these, you know, rather than to having, rather than to have to go through here and unify these and pick what, whichever ones that you, you know, wanted, we'd have to break those. And, ugh. Yeah. See, just dealing with, normals like this isn't really a fun <laughs> it's not really a fun way to go about editing normals and that's kind of where the smoothing groups come into play so I select all these unify them all we'll just reset it back to no smoothing groups there's a way that we can deal kind of do the same thing with just less work so I'm in a polygonal sub-object mode here inside of Edible Poly. Select these. Put those top faces on, it's almost like a color by number thing. We can put these on one and then we take all these side faces and select those and we put them on two. And what that does is if a polygon shares a similar number then it's going to smooth with that polygon. If not, it'll create a hard edge. And so all of these side faces are now on sub-object, or I'm sorry, smoothing group 2, and all these top faces 
It should be the bottom faces as well. Clear those. Whoops. Messed one up. That's what starts to happen. Clear. Put the sides on two. Then I can just invert my selection, grab both the top and the bottom, clear them, reset it, and put them on one. And so this is kind of a, a more ideal uh, low poly cylinder. We have our sides smooth together, it looks like a smooth cylinder, and then our tops look kind of nice and sharp. We drop our edit normals on the you see again these are unified or averaged whoops just wanted to know if I could yeah pull these <laughs> top lit So what the auto 89 is referring to is a method of smoothing this for creating hard edges, hard and soft edges, through a smooth modifier. And so if I auto smooth something at 180 degrees, that's all angles <laughs> up to 180 degrees are going to be smoothed. Uh, you see as I start to dial this down. any angle above 90 degrees in this case. Well, as soon as I head over that 90 degrees, those 90 degree angles create a hard edge, not gonna smooth together. So that's what this auto, you know, some people I've heard, uh, because Max doesn't, because Max has smoothing groups and other programs don't, some people tend to call the uh, what Max users call a smoothing group of one. They just say a, an auto smooth of 180, and that's the we're talking about the angle smooth. I turn that all the way up. So two separate smoothing groups. And then this one down here on the end is all one smoothing group there's more geo on it right so there's a couple of edge loops applied here there's a chamfer as well and we still have a real nice clean kind of flat sided cylinder then we have our uh, nice rounded edge as well and if we take a look at the edit normals on those we'll see our sides are averaged out flat Yep. And then these tops, not technically averaged out flat. And so there's another um, way to smooth these. This is what uh, people would call averaged, right? So if we these are all averaged or all smooth. If I were to break these, break those, it's all hard edges or all split, all the normals are split. And then there's a way to face weight them. And so to kind of, you know, like I said, we're trying to get these edges out here on the side nice and flat so they render nice and flat and don't end up with these shading errors like this or these shading artifacts. And, uh, even with more geometry, we can kind of get some rounding that still happens. The top of the cylinder is still kind of rounded. But if we weight them to the face, meaning we point them out straight, if I generate, you'll notice that these top normals right here tried to straighten out. I mean, they're almost straight for the most part, but that cleaned up a lot of my kind of bending that was happening. So you see if I turn this off, that's face weighted normals. Take a look at that.
these are averaged and then these are oops let's go ahead and do that again generate Another way to get kind of a clean result is to weight the normals to the face. Those are weighted normals, you could say. They're all, I mean, they're all averaged still, but we've weighted them to the face. Okay. Now, why is this important to us, normals? Uh, I had to give you that little bit of an introduction there to to get you used to the idea of what normals are. They're kind of meant to bend light, um, you know, the kind of the last part of the process, which would be rendering, lighting, and shading. And so I'm going to create a little setup for you here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sphere. It's going to be nice and smooth. <laughs> Lots of geometry. It's going to be our high poly or our high res mesh. Scale this up. I lined it to my plane here. And I'm going to hit in max. I have other videos for this, but I'm going to hit zero on my keyboard. And I'm going to set up a render for a normal map. I'm going to transfer the normals of this sphere to my plane. And this is this is where things start to get inter interesting. This is where things start to get, uh, or where the the power out of uh, dealing with normal maps starts to get. Uh, I don't know, just cray cray. <laughs> so. Add normal map. Set to a five twelve or even a two fifty six, something small. Create a sphere. Your normal map. I don't want to put it anywhere. Boom, 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 boom. So that's kind of what that process looks like. Render. And then we're going to create a material. Drop that new quote unquote normal map. A copy of that. So in the bump slot, we want a normal bump bitmap. We're going to load that bitmap. Sephira. A little bit of specular highlight on this. I'll make sure our bump's set to 100%. Cool. Okay, we can actually turn off. Oh. Padding. Turn off that padding. I'm going to re render that. So I don't get all those streaks on the outside of that. There we go. Uh, one more thing I forgot. Let's do about Ramus check. Render. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's basically that's basically the normals transferred over to our low res mesh or to our plane. We actually moved or uh, they say baked. <laughs> we put it in an oven, we baked a cake. We moved those normals from the sphere or we projected them onto this plane. And if we were to jump over to max and take a look at what that does, this is kind of the result that you get. And so what we're looking at here is really just this kind of psychedelic looking texture map. And we plug this psychedelic texture into our material and the shader knows that all of these colors mean a particular direction. So these are all normals in space. They point, all these colors point in a very particular direction. Uh, this is, you could almost think of this as kind of like a uh, a multi-dimensional bump map. So in the old days, uh, I say old days, we still use these. <laughs> a bump map, uh, black and white, up is uh, your height and then the black is the depth to it and then the, the mid-tone gray is that flat uh, unchanged mesh and so you kind of push the uh, flat unchanged mesh or that mid mid-tone up or down and uh, create kind of fake information and so the normal map works a lot like that except where it's kind of working on three different channels so if you uh, understand pixels at all, we have three channels, red, green, blue, and that's what all these uh, psychedelic colors are about. We have that red channel. If we pull the red channel out of this normal map, it actually is our left and right information across that sphere. If we look at that green, that green channel, that's our uh, up and down. And in Max, this tends to be inverted from most other programs. I think Unreal is uh, inverted as well. But that's our up and down information. <laughs> our Y information is kind of like, you know, red, green, blue. You can think of it a lot like the gizmos inside of 3ds Max or your 3D application. They represent directions in space and each one of these channels is kind of that general direction. Left and right, up and down, forward and back, blue for the depth. Questions? So, let take a look at I have this little high poly cube, some details floating on the surface. These little rivets that were created. They weren't modeled in, they're just kind of floating on the surface and flush with the others so that they look like they're modeled in. And then I baked these down to a lower poly box. copy these over. These are those original boxes and so I've made normal maps for each one of these. right? So the, I have a, a normal map made for our hard-edged box and I have a normal map made for our completely averaged box. And this is the results inside of Max and honestly they both look pretty darn good uh, but there are some things we're going to talk about. Uh, for that hard edge mesh, whenever we bake normal maps, hard edges, if you're not careful, you're not paying attention to kind of how you're handling them, they can leave behind this residue, that hard edge. That hard edge bakes into your normal map. And that is not ideal. So you would say, all right, well, let's not bake our hard edges in. Let's do it all averaged. 
average those out, which in max looks good. Max likes its own normal maps. They're synced, you could say. And so it overwrites any kind of shading, Max's viewport does, overwrites any kind of shading that might be coming from those average normals. But when we get into our game engine, I'm gonna flip over to uh, flip over to Unreal. This is that same this one over here. Oh, this one. This is that same normal map, and you can see even with those details applied, even with that normal map applied, we're bending the lighting, right? We're still getting that shading. This uh, surface, the side of this cube looks rounded almost. Always check your textures in the game engine you're headed to. So we don't want our stuff to look rounded and we definitely don't want our hard edges baked in. So those are kind of the couple of the problems that we're trying to avoid while getting a, you know, a, a game asset or a high res high res details inside of a game engine at a cheap cost. Those these are some of the things that we're trying to prevent, right? So solutions, I would say right off the bat, here's some solutions. And so how we can handle, oh, let's take a look at these, sorry, copy these out, kind of remove. So our first one here is all hard edges. So we can do it with hard edges. We can bake that normal map with hard edges. And as long as we break our unwrap, so we have a very particular unwrap, and this is an interesting thing. When we break our unwrap, we'll put seams on every single one of our hard edges, it cancels it out. So on every single one of these hard edges, because we have a UV break, a seam break, it looks clean, it renders it clean. It doesn't bake in those hard edges. So solution number one, that's a method of dealing with that. And it's pretty cheap too, because you know we're doing the 12 tries. This does kind of push up vertex count, but I'm not really gonna get into that in this video. So another solution would be to chamfer all the edges and so to add more geometry so we have more vertex normals and then we can still kind of keep our traditional unwrap you know traditionally this would be easier to paint it's all in one piece whereas this one when you're painting you kind of don't know which way which end is up and now there still is some rounding but it's a lot less. That one's kind of, that's not, that one wasn't right. I think it's important because we're going to talk about this next one. Oh, there we go. So same method, still chamfered, right? But this is kind of referring back to those face-weighted normals. This one's completely averaged. If we actually drop a edit normals on here and look at these, they're averaged out. There we go. Those are all averaged out. If we take a look at this next one, which we face-weighted, those are all face-weighted. we get a much cleaner result
And then kind of lastly, this is what it looks like with, lovely, this is what it looks like with edge loops. So extra edge loops. This is face weighting at really a higher cost. This box is 108 tries at this point, whereas the chamfer was only 44 tries. 44 tries. 108. Now, I'm not going to say any one. I'm not going to say any one of these is better than the other. These are just some of the things that you're going to need to understand when moving forward into your own game art and your own asset creation pipeline. These are all techniques that are applied kind of specifically I mean, just on, a, on this simple case, like these are just boxes. So <laughs> uh, it, these ideas and theories start to complicate the more detailed the meshes become. And uh, some of the theories different for, say, characters, for example. Character artists have to deal with smoothing groups and hard edges a lot less because there are less hard edges on a character, a lot smoother. So character artists typically don't have to deal with this as much, though they do as well. It's, uh, they're just, it's the same battle everyone has to deal with, getting meshes uh, with normals into a game engine. And these are just some of the things to look out for and some of the ways to battle uh, different looks, whether it be more geometry, face weighting, traditional, you could say. And then uh, kind of on the extreme end, this is real old school. Uh, I would say there was even a point in time where, uh, current, you know, get, there were, I think there, were, there was a point in time where games were definitely abusing normal maps and um, not really implementing techniques properly. And so as you get into your own, as you get into your own assets, you're going to need to be thinking about balance and what that kind of means. And this doesn't really apply to this object. I would never do this really on a box, but it's just to kind of illustrate that, you know, to combine methods uh, for the sake of balance. So, and this one's kind of a, a if I show you, it's a strange, it's kind of modeled strangely. So you, it's almost two, uh, two C shapes. chamfers on each side, and then we have a smoothing group on each one of those C shapes. Check those normals. Still pretty radical. Just curious what face weighting those would do. Make them even sharper. So, this one's supposed to represent the idea of balance, where you're you're using all techniques, smoothing groups, you're splitting UV seams so that those hard edges don't bake in, and that you're. Uh, it's really for a couple of reasons. It's splitting splitting so that these hard edges don't bake in, but also. keeping your unwrap a little cleaner and so you can kind of simply paint on the you know on the two strips here a little easier to paint versus the six blocks from the other one I was just looking at these in uh, marmoset as well just reiterating again Make sure that you guys check your normal maps and your bakes inside of your game engine, inside of a true game engine. Max viewport does not count. This, the ones on bottom are all the original max maps. 
and then the ones on top are marmoset baked. These were baked in marmoset using uh, a preset, a tangent space called mic, uh, sorry, mic t space, <laughs> mic t space. And it's a little bit of a different language of normal map in that it uses some different colors for different uh, vectors. And so, but the industry all around is kind of adopting mic t space as the standard. And so having marmoset be able to bake mic t space normal maps gets you cleaner results as you can see. This is literally the same bake one in marmoset, one in max, and they're getting kind of slightly different normal maps. You see how warped to this one down here looks. It's the original max one and then this one up here from Marmoset. How clean I mean even it's still a little warped, but that's the uh completely one smoothing group <laughs> uh first low poly, you know, the the problem mesh that we were talking about fixing. And uh Marmoset handled it just so much better. Even with those Mc, you know Mc3 space Make three space, make T space, normal mouse. There. So I'll probably end up doing this video again. This isn't the first time that I've done this demo, and I know I missed some information, so this will likely get repeated somewhere along the line in future videos. But I wanted to kind of at least talk about. Some of the basics of normals get a video up on my channel let you guys see some of why let's unhide all this it talks about normals smoothing groups you get to see kind of how to bake a normal map transfer that information over some of the problems with that using smoothing groups uh, or those average normals and smoothing groups how to how to solve using smoothing groups, how to solve using UV seams to prevent hard edges. I mean, there's just, these are some of the things that I'm needing to spell out for some of my students so that uh, they can kind of create some successful game assets. So I hope you picked up a little bit from that. I know it was a little sloppy, but uh, thanks for watching.